Friends, I have a question. Does your car measure the distance covered, or does it measure the displacement covered? What do you think? If you're not sure, let's see if you can answer that question by the end of this video. All right? So let's define what distance is. Now distance, it turns out, is the length of the actual amount of ground covered by an object. Okay? And displacement can be thought of simply as the change in position of an object, or in other words, the straight line length between the start point, whatever that's deemed to be, and the end point, whatever that's deemed to be. All right, start and end are always relative terms. So let's say we have an example. Here's a ball that's moving, okay? So we have a x coordinate here, right? It's measured zero through six. And what are the units we can call it meters or miles? It doesn't really matter. All right. But let's say the ball travels in this particular path. And we have a start point at zero. And the end point we'll define as four. Now, the question is, what is the distance that ball has traveled? Remember, distance is the actual length of ground covered by a moving object. So it looks to me like the ball moves six meters and then it goes back and covers another two meters, right? So that's a total of eight meters. So we would say that the distance that that ball traveled is eight meters. But now what's the displacement of that ball? Remember, displacement is measured as the straight line length or the difference in position between the start point and the end point. So where did the ball start? It started at zero. Where did the ball end? It ended at four. So what's the length between zero and four? It's simply four, right? Four units. Now, another thing about displacement is that we have to also give the direction. That's one of the big differences also with the difference between distance and displacement, is that distance is what's known as a scalar quantity. It doesn't take into account direction. Whereas displacement is a vector quantity. It takes into account direction. So. We would say now that the vector, the displacement vector, we always draw vectors from start point to end point. So that vector, when we draw that vector in, right, it's an arrow, when we draw that arrow in, which way is it pointing? Well, it's pointing along the positive x-axis. So we can say that the displacement here, four meters or miles or whatever the unit is, it's four units in the positive x direction. Okay, we can state that. We can also just give the answer as positive four. That's fine too. When we do actual math with these quantities, we're not gonna plug in words into the formula. We have to plug in values with their signs. So the sign of a positive uh, value indicates one of two things. It'll either be in the positive x direction or the positive y direction. Okay, a negative sign then would indicate that it's in the negative x or the negative y direction. All right. Uh, the other way we could do it also is to give the direction is to give it in terms of a cardinal direction, meaning north, south, east, and west, right? So we can clearly see that the ball right, had a displacement in the east position, okay? So we can also say that it moved four meters or miles or whatever the unit is east. All of those are acceptable ways to describe the displacement of that object. So remember, displacement is a vector. Vectors have two pieces of information. It has magnitude, meaning the amount, that's the four, and then it also has the uh, direction, and that we can describe in a bunch of ways. Positive x, moved east, right? All right. So that's really it. That's, that, that's all that it is, all right? That's really the big thing between distance and displacement. Now, think about the question I asked before, right? Does your car measure the distance traveled or does it measure the displacement? What do you think? Leave a comment below. I'll tell you also right now. It measures the distance traveled, right? Wouldn't that be kind of cool if the car measured the actual displacement? Imagine you only drove from your house to the store and then back, and every time you kept returning back to your house. What would be the displacement of your car? It'd actually be zero. Every time you leave your house, go to some place, and then return back from that place, it's zero. Wouldn't that be great if your car measured displacement instead? Right, go to a used car lot. Looks like the car was from 1970, has 48 million miles on it. But the guy says, eh, it has zero displacement. I'll give it to you for 20 grand. What? 20 grand? So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. I really do hope this video helped you out understand the difference between distance and displacement. Right, we're also understanding the difference between what a scalar is and what a vector is uh, at the same time. 
Uh, I also want to mention that we are writing a little kind of help guide. All right, now we're only on chapter two. The book is definitely not finished uh, by any means. But for the foreseeable future, we'd like to provide it to you for free. We'll leave a link all right, down below where you can access it. And if you wouldn't mind, give us a little feedback. All right, let us know if you like it, if you hate it, what you like or what you don't hate. All right, don't just say it sucks. Tell us why. Or don't just say it's great. Tell us why. What What is it about it that you really like? That really provides us the most value. All right? Um, and we'd appreciate it so much. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I got for you. All right? So, again, thank you guys. Namaste.